another guitar and it's a guitar that needs no introduction um, you know if you look at history of guitars and guitar players there are some really famous guitar players that are identified with their you know quote unquote signature guitars you could think of like Randy Rhodes uh, with his polka dot V uh, you got your Tony Iommi with his uh, famous Gibson SG you got Jimmy Page with his uh, 59 Les Paul Hendrix with his upside down Strat as uh, you know um, Stevie Ray Vaughan with his Strat, B.B. King with a Lucille, Buddy Guy with his polka dot guitar. So there are all those guitars. You immediately look at the guitar and you kind of go, oh yeah, that's a guitar belonging to, you know, so and so. So this guitar right here, I believe is, you know, just about the same recognition value where uh, you look at this bullseye paint job and you know immediately that it's a uh, Zach Wilde signature um, Les Paul. Um, however, I... <coughs> Sorry about that. So, uh, you know, Zach obviously got his fame from um, taking over the guitar duty for Ozzy. Uh, you know, Ozzy knows how to pick him, right? He got Randy. He played with I started with Iomi, and then he went to Randy. Then he went to Jake E. Lee. Then it was a Zach Wilde. Now the uh, latest, hottest thing is the Gus G. But Zach held the um, helm for guitar uh, throne for Ozzy for what is it, like 14 years? So uh, he's been with him the longest tenure. Anyhow, so, um, you know, Zach Wilde has a whole bunch of uh, signature guitars. You got your bullseye finish, and you got the uh, buzz saw. Then he has a camo finish with a bullseye like this, but it's a camouflage. And then uh, he's got his a split tail, which in my opinion is a really ugly guitar. Then he has an uh, Epiphone uh, signature that's also a, like, it looks like a coffin, right? Mini coffin, so, you know. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that particular guitar, but um, this right here is basically the original Zach signature. Obviously, you know, I didn't go to Gibson's signature because that's $47,000. Um, this is a little bit more affordable and, um, you know, hugely made, you know, main difference basically between this Epiphone model versus Gibson um, model is the, the Epiphone model comes with the passive EMG HEZ pickups. Uh, whereas the Gibson version comes with the 8185 active combo and obviously you would have the Epiphone headstock instead of a Gibson headstock and you know quote unquote the tone wood difference would be there but still this is mahogany with a maple cap with a um, maple neck with just uh, with the rosewood fretboard <clears throat> so you know pretty much a standard affair um, it's a uh, Les Paul custom uh, Epiphone Les Paul custom that's been outfitted with the, uh, you know, the, the Zach signature finish. So um, I tell you what, I actually haven't had a guitar in a while that had the uh, EMG HZ pickups in them. But unlike some people, I actually dig the whole passive tone of the uh, HZ, especially the neck pickup. Um, it drives a tube amp real nicely, right? And it has really bright, um, warm. Um, really creamy, thick distortion sound when paired with a proper amp. Um, <clears throat> so I really dig this guitar. I'm not sure if I'm gonna rip the pickups out and go like you know, Zachify the guitar by putting in 81 and 85 or whatnot. I um, and those of you who watch my videos, you know I have another Epiphone Black um, Les Paul Custom that's been outfitted with blackouts. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna change this to uh, another active pickups and I got other guitars with the 8185 uh, combination so I strung this guitar um, the wrap over on um, the um, tail piece here a la Zach does it so I, I think it actually helps with the tone a little bit and um, I like the way this guitar feels it has the uh, a little bit of a um, it's not painted neck but it's a um, you know it's basically unfinished, right? So, I love the way the neck feels. I originally thought years ago when I first grabbed this guitar, I thought the neck was a little too thick, but, you know, I've had my time with the uh, Slash Signature Last Ball, which has a thick neck, and other um, guitars with a thicker neck, so now I'm kind of used to it, so it doesn't feel um, all that weird. Uh, this particular guitar, I didn't get it new. Um, I got a really good deal off of um, uh, this one I got from eBay. Um, it's a 2005 model. You got to watch out for um, you know fake uh, fake Epiphone guitars from China 
especially the like the Zag Wild models or what have you. This particular model is uh, made in Korea. This is before the production went from Korea to uh, China. So um, the craftsmanship and quality of the build is quite nice. And one of the reasons I got it was because it was a Korean made. Because today you go to Guitar Center or what have you and you buy one, it's made in China, which you know, I don't have anything against China, uh, Chinese built guitars, but you know, let's face it, you know, Korean made is better, right? Um, so that's what this guitar is about, and um, I quite enjoy it. And it's pro primarily I uh, hung a thicker strings, so primarily I'm using it for you know practicing songs that are like a drop tuning and you know so on. So uh, that's uh, that's it, and um, I. I don't know if I shared it with you on my last video, but I'm probably going to slow down on the guitar acquisition for a little bit, and uh, my next major thing is going to be probably be a couple of amps, so uh, no new guitars for a while. So that's it. Um, until next time, take care. Have a good time. Bye.